Family mediation is something very much the government is pushing at the moment and, and one of the issues is not everybody necessarily knows what it is. Um, I'm a family solicitor but I'm also a qualified family mediator so I'm quite well placed to talk about how the two actually slot in and work together. Um, when you start divorce proceedings, often you will come to um, a, a lawyer first to find out the basics. And certainly if people approach me as a divorce lawyer, um, I will always at the first meeting discuss um, options as to how to deal with divorce and separation. And, and one of those options is obviously to involve um, a family mediator. It tends to be more to deal with the financial matters and, and aspects to do with the children rather than the divorce process itself. Um, but clearly that's the bit that people find most difficult in any case. So perhaps one of the roles of a, of a lawyer um, in terms of dealing with mediators, the first one would be to sort of inform people that it's out there and if necessary make referrals. Um, I work with lots of mediators so I know that there are some very good ones out there as a lawyer. So I can easily um, signpost my clients to them and then work alongside them. Not all family mediators and quite a few family mediators um, are legally trained and they may actually mediate across a whole bunch of things, not just family law. So assuming that they'll understand the sort of overall position is something that could be quite dangerous. So I think people as a minimum need to understand the sort of basics of it. And then perhaps even more importantly, they need to understand what they've got to cover. Um, as a lawyer, there's nothing more frustrating than getting an agreement that's come out of mediation that has simply not dealt with everything. People are very good at understanding they need to talk about the house and savings, but they may simply not have talked about pensions or income or any difficult sub sub subjects like that. I have several clients at the moment, for example, who are um, working with mediators, and I often find that they come back to me after a meeting at mediation and just check in, really, to see that they're covering everything, or maybe to get legal advice on specific points, or talk about whether they need to bring in experts like accountants or, or actuaries to deal with pensions. So hopefully people are still able to reach an agreement in the mediation process, but at the end of that, if they want it to become legally binding, that's something a mediator can't help them with. They will need to come back to a family lawyer to get an agreement drafted that can be lodged at the court and so that that can become legally binding and everybody knows where they are.